All right, so this is your lecture notes on the current classification system. So first of all, Carolus Linnaeus is the person who, after Aristotle, devised this new system based on something called morphology. So, very important word there. And that's basically just an organism's form and structure. So his classification system has organisms grouped into a hierarchy of seven different levels. And then each organism has a two-part name, known as binomial nomenclature. So the seven levels. I'm sure you've seen these before. We have kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Now there's one I want you to add at the top, and that's the term domain. So what happens is we, as we go down, there's fewer individuals. Because as you go down, it's more specific in terms of traits shared. Okay. Now, at the bottom here, it says mnemonic device suggestions. A lot of people know it as King, Philip, came over for either good or great, we'll say great, spaghetti. Okay, and that's kind of a really good way to remember these levels in order. So this is a practice. We're going to do this part in class. Um, here you go. So trace the ancestry. So this is why we want to know this. So if you look here, here we have, there's a tiger up here. We'll look at this guy. So he's in kingdom animalia, but he's in phylum chordata, which means backbone. Then from there, where is he? He's in mammalia, which is mammals. From there, carnivora, which is exactly what it sounds like. He's a carnivore. Felidae is cat. And then panthera. And then through that, you have leo and tigress, meaning the tiger's closest relative out of all the animals we started with at the top is the lion. So now on to binomial nomenclature. So this is how things are named. So it's a two-name naming system. This is really important to remember. It's always italicized, or if you're handwriting something, you need to underline it. The first name is the genus. The second name is the species. So key here, the first letter is capitalized. The second word the first letter is lowercase. The whole thing is lowercase. So our example down here, Homo sapiens, notice how the H is capital. The S is lowercase. You will definitely be asked to determine which is the correct writing of a scientific name. So examples, we'll also go over these in class. We'll test you and make sure you know what the proper scientific name is for these animals. So evolutionary relationships. This is kind of a mini taste of the evolution unit. It's just kind of thrown in for now with classification. So this is how scientists use this, use this to classify. So modern taxonomy, it uses Linnaeus' system, but there are additional kingdoms. And it organizes, like I said, in the context of evolution. So these are the major ways that scientists classify organisms. You definitely need to know these. There's five total. Okay, so first up is the fossil record. This is easy enough. You all know what fossils are. It just means that you can trace the fossil back to a, an early ancestor. And another key word you should know is phylogeny, which is the evolutionary history of an organism. Next up is morphology. So we also, we talked about this in the beginning, morphology is structure and function. So it's homologous characteristics and analogous characteristics. These are really, really important that you keep them straight and don't confuse them. Now here's this prefix, again, that we've talked about all semester or all year, the homo. Homo means same. So look right there. Same origin, similar structure and function. So this means that they do the same 
They do, they have the same bones, but they don't do the same thing. So, for example, a bat wing and a human arm. Bats and humans have the same bone structure. We have the same types of bones in our arms, but bats fly and we just use ours to lift. Now, analogous means they come from a different origin. So, completely different, but they do the same thing. So, our example, a bird wing and a butterfly wing. Both of them use it to fly, but birds are vertebrates and butterflies are not vertebrates. So, you have a big difference there. So, homologous means same. So, same bones, for example. And analogous means different, but they do the same thing. So, here's an example. So, homologous structures, here's a bat wing a bat wing versus a human arm. Okay, you see the different highlights. So these bones are the same. These bones are the same. These bones are the same. So we have the same bones in our arms, but we just do different things with them. And then if there was a whale fin here, it would be the same. Any other animal, dog leg, cat leg, all would be the same bones. Analogous structures are the ones that are completely different. So this is where you have the bird that has feathers is warm-blooded compared to the insect. So they both fly, but they come from completely different backgrounds. Next up is embryology. So this is development, or when you're in the womb or the egg or wherever the organism develops. So if your embryo develops in a similar way, you're more closely related. So if you look here, we have a fish, a salamander, a tortoise, a chicken, a rabbit, and a human. Well, we know that humans and rabbits are both mammals, but the rest of these are all different. And if you look, though, they all seem to be developing roughly the same. They all look roughly the same. Why is that? Well, all of these are vertebrates. So they all start from the same origination. That's how we know that all vertebrates are related. And then, like it shows, even the differences are related. So here, you have the developing embryo. And then here, you have a completely different thing. But, even though they look completely different, they actually are still closely related because they develop the same way. And then chromosomes, this is huge. So karyotypes, this is a word you should be familiar with. They suggest closer relationships. Okay, so when you have similar karyotypes, you have a closer relationship with that organism. So for example, human versus chimpanzee. So humans have 46, chimpanzees have 48. Meaning, the only difference is there's an extra set of chromosomes here for chimps versus humans. Otherwise, they look pretty much, not identical, but they do look pretty close to each other. And the last thing is macromolecules. So if you remember, we have proteins, DNA, and then lipids and carbs. Those are our four macromolecules. When we compare things like proteins and DNA, we see similarities. So organisms with similar sequences are thought to be more closely related. So we have amino acids that differ, for example... You have humans that have a eight different an eight difference with their amino acids between a monkey. But if you look, humans aren't very closely related to a lamprey because there's 125 differences in amino acids. And that's it.